Okay, we're at the Maple New Sugar House in Hebron, New York with Tim Wilmot, the 3 16th guru, can we call you that? Inventor. Uh, <laughs> very good. Uh, 30 years plus with UVM Extension and now a consultant with Dominion and Grimm and he's going to string up some 3 16th tubing for us here at the Sugar House. Tim, why do I want to use 3 16th instead of 5 16th? Uh, well, if we're doing gravity, 3 16th is going to give us a lot more vacuum. Uh, the smaller diameter tube will create a longer column of sap and that column of sap is what provides the weight that will give us vacuum at the tap hole. So it will just work much better. Do I have enough slope just by eyeballing it right here Well, any, any along my hedgerow? Any slope. You have great slope here. Uh, it doesn't take much slope to have some vacuum. If you want to have the maximum vacuum it's uh, it's really not about the slope, it's about the height difference between your tap hole and the end of the line, which in your case is your tank. So uh, from the top to your tank is probably going to be maybe 50 feet and you'll get the maximum vacuum possible at your elevation here, which is probably about 28 and a half inches, maybe 29 inches. Um, but some of these trees farther down the slope, you won't have anywhere near the maximum vacuum. If you're only 12 feet in height from the tap hole to the tank, then at that particular tap hole you'll get maybe 10 inches of vacuum, but still better than a bucket. All right, let's get to work. Okay. We have some very nice looking trees here, I'd say. Two taps for a lot of these trees. I usually try and limit to two taps, but some of these you could almost go three. Uh, and what I try generally to tell people is to limit the number of taps on a line to about 20, even though the tubing will probably perform well with quite a few more than that. I've done experiments with many more than that. But um, you need to keep track of leaks on the line. If you have a leak on a line with 50 taps, then you lose all the vacuum on 50 taps. So uh, depending on how diligent you're going to be with that, with your uh, leak checking. I like to um, have people keep a reasonable number on a line. That's just my my advice. And this line's going to go on the outside, and it's going to start on this tree, and the and the other line's going to start on the, on that side, and it's going to start with these with probably four taps right here. There's our clip. I'm going to run this around the tree, flip it on, there, that's never going to come off unless we take it off. And we're ready to go, we're going down the hill, so, okay. I may be a little excessive, but I like to go between small trees just to make sure this tubing has lots of support. So that's what I'm doing here and I'm just going to run it so there aren't a long, isn't a long stretch without some sort of support. And I'm just looking to see where we're going. We'll go around this. And uh, I'm going to keep pulling it tight. Let's see, I'd like to get that tree. I think we can do that alrighty. It's going to be a little zigzaggy, but that's not really a problem. If I were running uh, a roll of a stiff tubing, especially 5 16ths, I would be continually flipping this roll over every five or six coils that I take off so that we don't get a big spiral as it's coming off the roll. But this tubing, this, this DG tubing is soft enough that it, you really don't need to keep doing that. It's a lot easier to install. Uh, looking at there's a little dip here in the land the sap will run fine through that dip the only possible problem will be how the sap will pool up and of course at the end of the season there may be if it's an actual dip and I'll have to check my site gauge to see if it is the sap some sap may stay there so we're going to want to drain that out at the end of the season otherwise the sap is going to siphon just fine out of that this if it's actually a little bit below a sag right down here all right so from here 
looking at this line. This line actually goes downhill. It doesn't look completely like it does, but with our sight gauge, it, it's actually still running downhill. So sure doesn't look like it's the eye in the last spot. That's spots. right. So our line is coming down the hill, and a lot of those trees were are a lot of height above where the tank is going to be in the sugar house. But as we get farther and farther down the slope, there's going to be less height, which is what generates the vacuum between where the tap hole is and where the tank is. And so eventually we're going to get down to this tree. That's our probably our lowest tree. And we figured that's probably going to be about seven or eight feet above the level of the tank. So we'll get six inches of vacuum or so, which is better than a bucket. So we're gonna do start doing some drop lines now. Anything special or anything different that you need to do with 3 16 drops as opposed to 5 16 drops, Jim? Uh, no, these, uh, these, you have DG spouts here and they go on just fine with onto using this tool. Uh, I tend to use just one tool. I don't bother with a one-handed tool for things like putting on drops or things where you only have, you're grabbing one piece of tubing. I just do it all with one tool. It's simpler, and spend less money. All right, let's start uh, putting in some drops. I would like to spread this wide. And watch, it'll break apart. Off a piece. That's why we're, gonna, we're making our line just a little bit tighter every time we put in a drop. Also leaving a little bit of debris. In there. there we go. Ready to tap. The length of your drop line is about what, 36 or? That's what these are, yep. 36. Yep. And then with the smaller diameter hole, do I have to worry about wood chips plugging that up? I never have a problem with that. That's never been a problem. I use a nice new drill and uh, the drill usually clears the chips out just fine. Uh, you want to go in with a little twig or something and brush out the hole. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just um, when you're doing a few thousand, that can take a long time. Most people I talk to, people that have thousands of taps, don't do that and they don't have problems with chips. Yeah. Okay, so I'm catching my vacuum gauge just like it's a drop line. And I've already checked this gauge. I buy these in quantity and I've checked it uh, against other gauges to make sure, because every once in a while you get these cheap gauges, you'll get one that's bad. It should be, they should all be within about an inch of each other. And so now it's just a matter of, uh, uh, I'm gonna tie it to the tree to support it so it doesn't flop like that, but. All right, so looks like our work's most, mostly done for today, huh, Tim? Uh, you know, let's sum up what we did. We put up two lateral lines going all the way from the top down to the sugar house. Each one I think is about 400 feet long. And each one I think has so uh, between 20 and 25 taps. You don't want to go more than that, right Tim? I wouldn't go more than that. Uh, it, you could have many fewer and it would still work fine. You could have probably somewhat more and it would work fine. But uh, I think that's a good number to keep track of. You're going to want to keep track of the line for leaks and you don't want to have to keep track of 50 taps on a line. Uh, and um, so we've got all the lateral in place and then the drops will come whenever you're ready.